Okay, as far as this, as the AP test goes, they always have one question, like for sure, that's lab-based. This has been, like a lab just like this has been on there, or a question just like this has been on there many times. So, and it's, the reason it's on there is because it gives them an opportunity to test your math, test your, like, it would also like be looking at a picture, but then your ability to reason through what common mistakes might have happened. So anyway, yada, yada. To find the volume of math, you take your grams of mg and convert it to moles of H2. Did everyone figure that out by the end? I hope so. Moles of H2, now that we're in chapter 10, you should always know moles of a gas is really N. Okay, so we can take grams of a solid, but solve for moles of a gas, which we can use in Pivner. All right, and then we're solving for V eventually. So if PV equals NRT, then V is NRT over P, correct? So then I have, get that out of the way so it doesn't confuse people. I have whatever this answer was, if I remember, it was like 0 0.007, or was there another zero for? And then you, you all probably had a little bit different number, but whatever. Then 0 0.0821 or 206, depending on how you feel about life. And then T, I don't know. Let's hear a temperature. Why do I have this problem still in my life? 294, I know. Okay, then the pressure, what did that end up to be? Okay, good enough. And you end up with a number. And that number would be in liters, right? And I, don't, I don't, I don't know. No one did this exact one, but I saw one that was like 17.9 um, after we converted it to milliliters. You okay with that? All right. Now, I know this math probably is not 17.9. I just went with an answer. Okay. That's the volume of math. Yes, John Nation. All right. That's a good question. So I gave it to you in inches of HG, which is what we use in America and no one else does. So the first thing you have to do is convert this to millimeters of HG. And millimeters of HG is really TOR. And from TOR, you need to go to ATM. So you'll do this process. You take your inches, which was 30.54. Is that what I said today? Okay, well, whatever it was. I'll just say 54. And I'm going to multiply that by, so this is inches. For every one inch, I have 2.54 millimeters. It's 25.4, 25.4, sorry. And then that will give me a number. Let's pretend that number was like 762. That would be my millimeters of mercury or my tor. To go to ATM, I have to divide that by 760 because that's the conversion factor. And that gave me like 1.01. You okay with that? Yep. It's extremely rare that the AP test gives you anything in inches. It's very common. They give it to you in millimeters of mercury and they expect you to know that that's Tor, but usually you'll never get it in inches. All right, any other questions where we got any of this? Yes. Well, we use our system for everything, which no one else uses. We tried in the 70s, and everyone ran Jimmy Carter out of office. <laughs> it was like one of his death nails. We, we tried to finally give up and convert everything to metric, like the entire world. But we are America. We don't do that. We try to make everyone follow our rules instead. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. 
Yeah, so it's fine. You know, as a science teacher, I wish we would, like for sure, but it's never going to happen in my lifetime. We'll never gain the traction for that. Okay, now. Anytime you use math to solve for something that's sort of lab based, that's always the accepted value. All right, that's the accepted value. That means that's what it should be. But we are in a high school chemistry class. We have not pure magnesium. We have tools that aren't super precise. And so then we have what we actually observed and we call this the observed value. Now, in another chapter, we learned other words for this. The accepted is also known as the theoretical yield. And then the observed is your actual. Yes, I know I spelled yield two different ways, but. I got one of them right. That is exact my logic right there. Okay, so we've heard of those. All right, so then we do the lab, and I stole this from you, right, Grace? Um, okay, well, whatever. What was your actual then? Wasn't it 24, 23? All right, so 23 milliliters. And this we just saw with our eyeballs. That's your eye. All right. We did the lab. If this was the AP test, listen. If this was the AP test, it would just be written or it would be in a diagram and it'd have the line. Okay. Because we can't do a lab on the AP. But we will, this would somehow be observed on the AP test. Okay. Then it would ask, what is our percent error? We've done percent error on a few different labs. We take our observed, which was 23, minus the accepted was 17.9. Divide it by 17.9, and then multiply all this by 100. All right, well, let's see, that's about 20%. 32.2, really? Okay, we'll say 32%. Okay, that's how you would figure that out. Then the AP test will always ask for sources of error. How could we be that far off? And the main reason we're that far off is something we haven't really talked about, but hopefully you've read or listened to it in the video. Does anyone know what that is? Okay, it is correct. It's not an ideal gas. That's not the main reason, though. <laughs> here's our, nope, here's our udometer. And we're going to say this is H2, right? But the problem is there's another gas in here that's not H2. It's water vapor. Not because it's not pure, it's because water vapor, depending on the vapor pressure, which is dependent on temperature, water vaporizes and goes and mixes into that gas. So if you have like it would be closer. Now, it's still actually not that close, and I don't know where those errors come from. I really don't know how we're so wrong, um, but that's okay. Go ahead. What are you getting? So, uh, we have 0.0076. Okay. And 0.0821 is 94. Okay. And for pressure, we have uh, 1.02. And then. What did you get here? Uh, 0.016. Well, that's, that's fine. 
This is your liters, but I need it in milliliters. <laughs> so, hey, why are we picking on people? I've graded all of your tests. And those that are picking the worst are some of the worst scores of the test. <laughs> so we all make mistakes, but that makes sense. It's way closer than you thought. There you go. Yes. All right. Well, if you make a mistake like that, your error would be huge because you were a thousand off here, like three, three decimal places. So your error would expand or multiply huge. Okay. Are we sort of all right with this? Judah, go. Yep. Um, okay. Let's let's move on. So the rest of the day is on partial pressure. Now I'm not going to make you turn in your labs. I'm going to give you points for it. Okay, you're welcome. Merry January 10th or 11th or 12th. Okay. Here we go. Partial pressure. Partial pressure is really important. There's one part of partial pressure that's super confusing to almost every teenager ever. It's not hard math. You just got to believe it. <laughs> and it just bugs kids. I won't point it out when it bugs you, but someone will. All right, here we go. It's in a waves because these are out of, order, out of order. Dalton's law of partial pressures. It's pretty cool. And just like everything here, it involves math. All right. What? what is it? Looks like I know it does. <laughs> Okay, Dalton's law of partial pressure says the following. The total pressure of a mixture of gases equals the sum of the pressures that each would exert if it were present alone. So that's a complicated way of saying each one, you just take its pressure and add it up and that will tell you the total pressure overall. No. No, not at all. Now, shh. if in this partial pressure, if I make this a six, tell your partner what you think it will do to that one. Ready, go. Okay. The total would be what? 7.5. Does this ATM give a crap about that ATM? No. no. The pressure of each one is independent of the pressure of the other ones. They don't care. You okay with that? They don't care. All right. Next. So. How did you get burned? <laughs> <laughs> what the kale? Kale. Kale. All right. Oh my gosh, why do I teach this class? Each gas, each gas in a mixture of gases behaves independently of the other gases present. So like the breath you just inhaled, you needed oxygen. But most of what you inhaled was nitrogen. The oxygen in the atmosphere couldn't care less about the nitrogen and vice versa. They act completely independent of each other. All right, therefore, each gas in a mixture obeys the ideal gas law. Treat each of the gases separately in the mixture. All right, these things are super important right here for all the math we're gonna throw together. Four equations govern the treatment of partial pressure equations. The first one is Dalton's law, which says P total is the sum of all pressures. So that just means P total equals P1 plus P2 plus P3 plus P4, et cetera. Mole fraction, we've actually used this before. Um, it's super important for this thing. 
the mole fraction is where you take the moles of an individual gas and you divide it by the total moles in the mixture. So it's moles of A over moles total. We've used that once or twice. We'll use it in this chapter and at least one more. Then the ideal gas equation, PV equals NRT. And then partial pressure, that is where the pressure of one gas is equal to X, which is really the mole fraction, times the pressure total. So we will use all of these combined. Anytime a mixture is given in the problem, you will need to use these equations to solve it. Here is an example. So a mixture of nine grams of oxygen, 18 grams of argon, and 25 grams of carbon dioxide exert a pressure of 2.54 atm. What is the partial pressure of each gas? Okay, so we have to look up here and we see, all right, it wants partial pressure. So that means I need to use equation number four. So that means I need X times P total. All right, which means I need X, which means I need equation number two first. We okay with that? Now we need to know the pressure total. Oof, it's getting, getting thick in here. So that just means the P total is the sum of all the pressures. So we're gonna use that as well. All right, so the first thing we need to do is like always, we gotta convert crap to moles. So I'm gonna take nine grams and I'm gonna take 16, sorry, it's actually 32 grams. I'm just gonna, hold on, you'll see why. Oh, it's, uh, di it's diatomic. Okay, so I have nine 30 seconds. And that is for my oxygen. Okay, then argon. Argon is not um, diatomic and it's 40. Is that right? Yeah. Wow, I hate being a genius. It's such a burden. 40 grams per one mole argon. And that will give me my moles of argon. Then I have 25 grams of CO2. And that's 44 grams of CO2, one mole. All right, anyone have them? We'll add them in a second. So 930 seconds is what number? 1840th is? 0.45. And 2544s? Okay, we need all these numbers, but we need more. Hold on. All right. Like, we're gonna save these numbers because they are important. Um, we need, I don't know what order you can go. The next two steps you can do it in whatever order you want. We need to know the total pressure, right? So I should have put an arrow here. How do we find total pressure? Oh, sorry. It gave it to me. Never mind. It gave it to me. I'm an idiot. Sometimes it does not give you the pressure. You have to calculate it. But now I know I didn't point an arrow. Yeah, and so listen, even though it gave it to us, I'm dumb. If it does not, it's not bad. You just add all the moles together and that's your end value in Pivner. We'll do another problem like that coming up. Okay, so now I know the moles, I need X. So I need these numbers divided by the total. So someone add these up for me, the three of them. 
Uh oh, we got some battle there. Whatever. 1.298, 1.298. And that will give me the mole ratio for each one of them. No. No. Yep. All right. So now, 0.28 divided by 1.298 is what number? 0.217. Okay. Do you have the next one also? 0.347. Okay. Next. Okay, now this is your mole ratio to find your partial pressure. We now have this. The problem gave me 2.54. So now each one of those numbers, you just multiply by 2.54. All right, we have answers. Okay. Seven nine. Okay. All right. Now, when you do this problem, you should always check. How would you check to see if you're right? When you add these together, they better equal two point five four, which I mean, they'll be within reason. They should add a 2.54. And then, so now we've got the partial pressure of each gas. We use the mole ratio and the total pressure. Now, we don't have time to work through another problem, but why don't you, oh, hey. Oh, that's the same one. Take a picture of this. And see if you can do this tonight. It's the exact same process. All right, we'll call that good.